Okay, welcome back. It's uh, been a while since we've been in this Bible study series. We're looking at, was the book of Jude written after 70 AD? This is episode 18. We're going to look at Jude verse 5. Jesus or the Lord saved the people out of the land of Egypt. So our objective here is to hopefully end the debate regarding the translation of Jesus here in Jude verse 5. So what's the passage itself? Uh, is it Jude 5? Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. And that's out of the ESV. There are other versions that say Jesus as well. Certainly this is a controversial verse, lots of debates over it, whether it's Trinitarianism, Unitarianism, you know, we're talking about the pre-existence of Jesus. And I see other debates online with Jehovah's Witnesses and all kinds of debates over this. So the question is, is Jesus the best or the correct translation? You know, short answer, I'm going to say yes, you can, you can do your own research, but we're going to show here, even as a note, even if the Lord is used instead of Jesus here in verse five, the context from the prior verse is consistent with a reference to Jesus and not to God the Father. And we're going to look at this deeper in the study here, but let's just read them uh, back to back here, Jude four and five. For certain people have crept in unnoticed who long ago were designated for this condemnation, ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into sensuality and deny our only master and Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, and again, you can plug in the Lord here, that the Lord who saved the people out of the land of Egypt afterward destroyed those who did not believe. So if you look at the prior verse, we're talking about the Lord Jesus and verse five, whether you use Jesus or the Lord, the most logical thing would be to point back to the last reference of Lord, which is Jesus. So therefore, Jesus, the Lord, saved the people out of Egypt. So the question is, what do we do with this? You know, maybe the problem can be solved by focusing on Jude's use of Egypt rather than wrestling with the translation of Jesus. And again, I didn't mention this prior to, but all the textual criticism and all the manuscripts, it really seems to point to the fact that Jude originally used, used the word Jesus. And we're going to see how this isn't controversial when we look at the definition of Egypt. So remember in this study series on Jude, and if you haven't watched it before, I, I encourage you to, especially if you're the, the preterist uh, perspective here that we really, uh, in my mind, we just hands down proved that Jude is writing after 70 AD, that this is the only book of the Bible that was written after 70 AD. But anyway, so again, our premise here, Jude is writing shortly after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. I don't know if it was months after, years after, Anyway, the destruction of Jerusalem is a major focus of the book of Revelation, and Jude, you know, undoubtedly is familiar with the book of Revelation. So what does the book of Revelation say about Egypt? And this is Revelation chapter 11, talking about the two witnesses, and says, and their dead bodies, the two witnesses, will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom in Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. Therefore, Egypt is Jerusalem. Now consider this. The Bible is a progressive revelation. Jude, writing shortly after 70 AD, he's likely building upon the words of the book of Revelation. Jude's reference to Jesus having saved the people out of Egypt and afterward destroying those who did not believe is likely a reference to Jesus' second coming and the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. So there's no need for a Trinitarian or Unitarian debate here. And just to confirm Jude's context, if, if I haven't convinced you of that, Jude verse 6 this is interesting. It says, and the angels who do not stay within their own position of authority, but left their proper dwelling, he has kept in eternal chains under gloomy darkness until the judgment of the great day, just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities, which likewise indulged in sexual immorality and pursued unnatural desire, serve an example by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire. Notice there, Jude in the same paragraph that he mentions Egypt also makes reference to Sodom. And I don't believe that this is a coincidence here. We've got Sodom and Egypt you know, being uh, the description of Jerusalem in Revelation 11, verse 8. Again, I just don't see a, a coincidence there. Again, with all the other things we looked at with this series, Jude is writing after 70 AD. It makes more sense that he's talking about something that immediately happened. So just as Jude builds off of Second Peter for most of his letter, he also builds off the book of Revelation. Now let's take a closer look at a verse also. Uh, this is uh, back to verse 5. Now I want to remind you, although you once fully knew it, that Jesus, who saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroy those who did not believe. Now, Jude is reminding his audience of something that they once fully knew. His audience would have fully known what had recently happened in Jerusalem in 70 AD. I don't think this could be said of the exodus out of Egypt. You know, this, this word fully knew has a sense of them being present for the experience, to experience the actual event rather than just 
knowing about it. It seems to be there's more emphasis there. So it's an, just another reason to, to point to uh, the fact that he's looking at 70 AD when he's talking about this. Also, we want to look at Old Testament and New Testament parallelism. This kind of falls in the, the category of nothing new under the sun. In the Old Testament, God saved the people out of the land of Egypt, the Exodus, um, and God changed chained the angels who sinned. This comes from 2 Peter chapter 2. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, again, 2 Peter also references there, uh, if you want to look at 1 Enoch uh, chapter 10, verse 4, Again, Enoch, there's a, a study, we can, we can look at that as a whole another study. We've done some studies here on this channel. So just as in the Old Testament, you had that happen, in the New Testament, you have Jesus also saving the people out of Egypt, out of Jerusalem, and you have Jesus chaining Satan, Revelation 20, verse 1 to 2. You know, whether it's not literally Jesus or not, we're, we're talking you know, one of his agents, or you could interpret that the angel is Jesus too. But again, the things that God is credited with having done in the Old Testament, there's a parallel with Jesus having done those same things. I'm going to uh, post a video at the end here too, maybe a little end content or description. You know, the millennium, an analysis of the judgment on Azazel of Satan, both at the flood and in 70 AD. That's a video we had done before. I think that might help explain the position that I just uh, explained right there. So what God did in the Old Testament, the Exodus and the flood, Jesus also did the New Testament in Jerusalem in 70 AD. So Jude verse five through seven is Jude's commentary on the events that occurred in 70 AD. And his Old Testament references are included just to show the parallelism of the Old Testament and the New Testament. So our conclusion today, you know, Jude five doesn't need to be a battlefield for debates regarding Unitarianism, Trinitarianism, and pre-existence of Jesus or Jehovah's Witness, or whatever fights you get into over that. You know, Jude five is confirmation that Jesus returned in 70 AD. And it's also confirmation that the book of Jude was written after 70 AD. I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, if you have any comments, questions, feel free to bring them up. And until the next time, as always, contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints and God bless.